<laughs> so I think we're going to call the meeting to order at um, 6.03 on Monday, June 10th in the Woodbury Town Library. Um, any adjustments to the, to, to the agenda this evening? Uh, yeah, there's a, a complaint. Mm -hmm. A dog complaint to be discussed. And you said dog complaint? Dog, yeah. And um, I don't know when we should do that, but. Um, uh, All right, put it on updates and other business? Sure. Okay, dog complaint. Since the person hasn't shown up here. Okay. Okay, and uh, Skip is going to do his talk, talking under the town clerk's report. Okay. I'll be quick, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's oh, and then the, the person well, the, who's not here, I think, right? The, the what? The person with the declaration of inclusion. That's right. Yeah, I wanted to here. say the uh, yeah. person to, who has been requesting to be put on the agenda to sign the dec ask us to sign the declaration of inclusion. Um, we finally put her on the agenda and come to find out she lives in Rutland and is not going to be able to come to any meeting. So unless we can see her by phone, which I didn't really have time to deal with that today to figure out how to do that. We could just table that? Yeah, we could table it so okay. that she says. We yeah. could set up the Zoom thing for remote if you want. Can we do that here? In this, yes, we can. In yeah. this room? Yeah. yeah. Michael's the only one that knows how to do that. I don't know how to do it, but uh, and I'm fine with setting it up. <laughs> yeah, but we stole your computer, Michael. No, I never used that computer. Okay. Was <coughs> oh. <laughs> I used my own. Okay, okay. so that'll be tabled. <laughs> if there's no other adjustments, uh, the next item is to approve the minutes from our May 28th meeting. Whoops. So what is the board's pleasure? With? Well. I guess I'll move that we approve them. There's a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of approving the minutes from May 28th, please say aye. 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 There is a, sl a slight comment here on the temperature report last time we thought it was going to cost $401 to keep up the green books. But this morning when I was looking for something else, I came across this uh, announcement from the town, from the state librarian who said that the t state is going to have to pay an extra $401 for anybody who wants to keep um, getting those books. Oh, so it wouldn't come to us. So, yeah. So, and, and the deadline was Friday, and I was just reading it this morning, and so I jumped on there, and I said, please, it's only a day late. And they said, okay, they would put us on the list. So, Robinson, when she, the, the email that she got did not say that. It didn't? Okay. So. Well, that's good news. Yeah. So there's the minute she comes in. Right. Anyone want an extra copy? I was wondering if you guys want me to make extra copies of the minutes for you so you can add them to your uh, yeah, files. Oh, yeah, it probably would be good to have. There have been a couple of times where I've had to go through back. my pile of papers looking. Yeah. I have, I have them on my computer. Okay. So okay. I mean, I'm happy to take them. Okay. No, I mean, it's I good. Good. I think not collecting a lot of paper these days. Yeah, when I'm here, it's paper. <laughs> here, it's here's one for you. Uh, <laughs> anybody else? <laughs> Testing out my printer today. <laughs> uh, I believe you gentlemen all have a, a place, but if you prefer or if you would like to make a public comment, the, this is the this is your opportunity here. All right. Seeing that there's no other public here, we're gonna okay. um, aside from. Uh, town officials, we're going to move on to the town clerk's report. Do you want Skip to do his little presentation first? It's up to you two. Want me to go first? Sure. <laughs> I just wanted to come and give the uh, select board an update of what's going on from an IT perspective. I stood up at the meeting and announced that, you know, looking for help. We've had some people come forward. I, specifically, I have Wayne Lappin and Stephen Murphy, and uh, they're, they're sort of newbies, but, uh, you know, uh, they have various levels of IT background. Mm. 
That said, I also started to look for ways to offload what I'm doing and uh, basically get what's in my mind recorded someplace. And I ran across RB Technologies. They're down in uh, uh, North London, East Montpelier, off of Route 14. And I worked with them in the past when I had some networking issues in my house. Long story short, they came out and uh, they surveyed our facilities. And they're going to get back to us with, with a proposal to do remote management of the facility. That's part one. Part two is they're going to tell us what equipment we need to upgrade the network infrastructure in the clerk's office. Because right now, I guess a good way to describe it is a mess, right, Robin? Yeah. There's stuff <laughs> hanging off the tables and behind. It's, mm -hmm. it's a mess. And if somebody has to come in there and figure it out, they're going to look at it and turn around and walk out. So anyway, the rough estimate on that, and this is a very, very rough estimate, in terms of uh, replacing the equipment, having the building rewired in terms of updating the, uh, the networking cable there, and uh, mounting new equipment on a board. As you go down to the basement, you go in the back of the basement, go around the corner, go around the corner, there's a space there. Okay, it's sort of the, uh, the south, back south wall of that room in the basement. That's where we can mount the equipment. It's sort of underneath where the cables come down anyway. Hmm. Very rough estimate on that is somewhere between four and eight thousand dollars. Okay, very rough estimate. That will be fine too. That does, sorry to interrupt, but just clarification mm -hmm. that does not include a cost for remote management, too, right? That's not the cost okay. of remote that's management. That's just cleaning that things up. That's a monthly fee. Yeah. And I don't I have no idea what that is. I got to look at it. This is sort of grown. Right now, as of last Friday, we can roll all of Woodbury's IT infrastructure into this remote management. That's the clerk's office, that's the town hall, that's the garage, that's the library. And Sturgey Murphy is on board with the library, especially since Sarah Van off retired. And I installed the equipment in the library as Sarah took it off over from me. Did an excellent job, but she's left and Stephen's sitting mm. here scratching his head. And just an example of what happens when somebody leaves and they got all the knowledge. It's, it becomes interesting. And when I talk about remote management of the town hall, Remember we had an issue a year ago, two years ago, you contacted me and said, how can we put a password on that? Yeah. And we said we can't really. Oh, that was the... That was the town office. Town office. But we had people doing uh, illegal downloads of videos here and it's from the town hall from the uh, network that... Uh, Comcast? No. How far away? Next to you. Next. Michael. Michael, thank you. <laughs> Where do you get to be my agent? Michael had set up... A small network there, and people were logging onto that, and they're doing like the downloads and stuff. Huh? Someone did. I don't remember that. Yeah, you had your router in there, and people were logging onto that. No, I, that was a town router. Yeah. And well, the town hall it wasn't my router. Somebody had a router in there that set I, up a wireless network. I do remember that. Yeah. Okay, and it's gone now, thank God. But okay. it's, you know, hmm. so nobody can get on that network. But hmm. with remote management, they put something called a smart switch in there. Okay, they can program uh, uh, ports on that switch to say, you can't do this stuff on this port. Okay, we can put a remote antenna out there, and we can broadcast internet signal to the parking lot into the park across the way. That doesn't stop people from downloading their email. That doesn't stop people from doing Wi-Fi calling and contacting their drug dealer. Uh, but they can go to various places to do it anyway. But it stops, the, you know, uh, stops a lot of the nefarious stuff. Not saying we're going to do that, but that gives us that capability. Does that, that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. So, uh, as, as part of this thing with RV Technologies, we're going to do a site visit there the 17th. Is that right, Michael? Michael. Skip. 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 <laughs> the other skip. We're going to do a site visit there on the 17th, and Skip Lindsay's going to come, I'm going to go, uh, Stephen Murphy's going to go, and uh, Wayne Lappin's going to go. So we all have IT backgrounds. And as the, the RV technology person said to me, why do you want to come and do a site visit? I said, I want to make sure you're not scamming us. <laughs> uh, we want to see their facilities, see what they've got, see their server room, uh, see how they handle callbacks, etc. So they would basically be giving us uh, 
uh, normal working hour support. So if there was a major issue, you can call there, and they can log into the computers remotely. Mm -hmm. They would be taking care of all back backups. They would be taking care of all software updates. It takes a huge thing off my shoulders. This still would require people like me to be able to interface with Robin and Brandy and, uh, and Pam for the nitty little stuff. Is this, is this a spam email? And, and Robin does that when she has something that's in question. She either calls me or sends me an email and says, what mm -hmm. should I do with this? And generally, trash it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's RB Technologies. Any questions on that so far? And again, this is, this, nothing is committed here. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is just, you know, investigation. And when I have firm numbers, we'll get back to the, uh, the select board with them. So I just wanted to ask Skip, you confirm that that's needed? Yeah. Oh, it's always good to have a network operations center yeah. looking at your stuff. Yeah. You know, surveilling it, you know, 7 by 24 mm -hmm. by 365. <laughs> it's, it's essential. Plus, yeah. you know, if they have whatever rate level they mm -hmm. have, Skip, I don't know what they have. But if they had backup mm -hmm. and it's remote backup, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's the best mm -hmm. you can do. You know, so you know. It, it, Thank you. It, it brings us into the 21st century yeah. from an IT perspective, and we should be good for at least five years, maybe 10 years yeah. before mm -hmm. we have to look at it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't I, just, I don't know if I'll be here in 10 years, but somebody else is wrong. So I just took a note. I'm going to contact FEMA and see if we can get any money uh, for reimbursement for any of this cost oh. and see if we can tie it somehow into the, the disaster mm -hmm. as a mitigation strategy. You know, you know, going forward. So, you know, it's a shot in the dark, but at least it's something. Hey, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and the infrastructure would probably have to be out of the basement. No, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be up high enough on the wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as long as it's out of the. Mm -hmm. I asked the question too. How high? Yeah. How high did the water? How high did the water come? And it was evidently up about a foot. Yeah. This is going to be up, you know, above four feet. It will be chest level. Is the town able to sign up, or ha who's our current internet service provider? Next topic. Great, great, man. Thank you. Glad you did that. So at the same time, with all the emphasis on CB fiber, I said, all right, this is a perfect opportunity for the for the town to cut our ties with, pardon the expression, Edwin, Consolidated Communications and Comcast. So uh, I approached CB fiber and uh, said, here's what I want to do. And they said, sure, we can do that. And just go sign up. So I go to sign up on the web page. We have to sign up as a commercial provider. The rates are ridiculous. I pulled them back and said, not going to happen. OK? How can you charge a not-for-profit organization like the town, like a, uh, a fire department, like the rescue squad, like any of the others that are out there, commercial rates? They're not in business. They're not making profit. They're running off of budgets from the town and their budget strap. And I guess I hit a nerve uh, because the, uh, uh, I got directed to the uh, uh, the manager of technical uh, manager of customer service, very nice lady. And by the way, if you're not aware, Wave Steel Telecom is managing all this for CP Fiber. They are excellent. Okay, they're a very very good organization out of uh, out of Wade Steel Vermont. So she said she took that everything I said. Said let me take it up to the board. And let me get back. And she called me back and she said the board is willing to consider residential rates for the uh, for the town of Woodbury. And then it dawned on me at that point in time, well, the town of Woodbury is more than just the clerk's office and the town hall. It's also the library and it's also the garage. So I threw that all in. They, they basically said, yeah, we would consider all that. And then the, this, this woman, the, direct, the manager of uh, customer service, got back to me and said, one of the members on the board says, I'm not allowed to talk to you because you're not a town employee, you're only a volunteer. What? So I said, well, you know what? You can talk to the town clerk all you want, but guess what she's going to do? She's going to point you to me. <laughs> so they asked for a letter authorizing me. Oh, I wrote that letter. Robin signed it, <laughs> gave it back to me. I sent it to them today. So my title... And we talked about this before as voluntary IT manager for the town, if anybody has to. <laughs> and I need a raise. <laughs> Did you ever talk to John Reed? Yeah. John, oh, I copied John Reed, like okay. you said, on that note. And John got back to me and said, excellent note. We have been pushing the board to do this. He's on the board. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, they've been pushing 
Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And the other issue that came to light over the weekend is three season camps. Mm -hmm. Okay? They need a seasonal rate. Because talking to people at Greenwood Lake, they would go with CB5 or if they can discontinue or they can, uh, 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 you know, uh, suspend their service and not have to pull, pay the full rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, as again, as I talked to people at CB5 this morning, they said a lot of people have been pushing for that now that camps are opening up. So mm -hmm. the board's addressing that also. So that's where all that stands. Uh, any, and again, I'm negotiating with CB Fiber, and nothing's in concrete. They got to get back mm -hmm. to us with prices and you know what what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. You know, they got to look at each location and see what's involved in getting the uh, the fiber into the building. Uh, in most cases that I'm aware of, it's got to be running conduit. Uh, we don't have conduit at the clerk's office. We don't have conduit at the town hall, but I don't understand how that worked because their wires are coming over the highway there. Mm -hmm. There's conduit at the school here for, for this building, and I don't know about the garage. I've never looked at the garage, but they would look at that and figure out what's going to be done. Mm -hmm. Any questions on CB fiber? Mm -hmm. The last thing is our copier lease with Canon is up in December. Mm -hmm. And uh, to say that that is a piece of sh the one that we have today is a piece of shit is putting it mildly. Mm -hmm. We tried to set that up to do mass volume scanning uh, for for mm -hmm. for the FEMA stuff. I spent hours on that. I could not get it to work, and Canon would not give us any customer support. Mm -hmm. Kept sending us documents, the same documents. I was finding this stuff on YouTube. Can't get it to work. So uh, I reached out to. Through RB Technologies, I said, who do you guys recommend for printer vendors? They gave me two companies. I think both those companies have got back to me. I sent them the information they re requested. I'm waiting for them for it to get back to me. And one of my requirements is you're going to have to demo this stuff to make sure it works. We're not taking your word for it. Hmm. You can burn once, you're not going to burn it twice. Hmm. What and kind it, of prices were they giving you? Don't know the answer to that yet. Okay, because if it's over $8,000, we have to go out to bid again. Okay. Hmm. $8,000 purchase price. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Other um, questions? That's unless true there's for a reason why, unless there's <coughs> a reason not to. That's true for a lease as well. Sounds like these are leases, and I don't know the answer. Good question. I don't, yeah, know. I don't know. I'll, I'll find out what they're going to charge us, yeah. and then we got to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Other questions? And also for these other things that are needed, if they're not in the budget, we still need to buy them. Yeah. Don't you think? I mean, we need to do it. We can't yeah. just wait until another fiscal year comes around. That would make me pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess it Not makes including sense. the raise. It makes sense yeah. to find out what RV comes yeah. back to us. But yeah, we got to find out what the financial is. But I don't want to get you guys get blindsided with when I come in with this. Hey, here's what I've been doing. At least okay. I've planted the seed and said, get ready to be, get ready to be smacked upside the head with, you know. Okay. Some expenses. <laughs> Thank you. If we could only have accumulated all the hours you've given us over the years, we'd have thousands of dollars. Well, to, to, just to put it in perspective, <laughs> when I was consulting before I really retired, I was getting three to five hundred dollars an hour to do this. Stuff. <laughs> and your bill would be pretty high right now. <laughs> the other thing also is all the clerk's office PCs will be on Windows 11. By, hopefully by the end of June, definitely by the end of July. I've basically got one more to do, and that's the mm -hmm. listeners PC, and I've got other stuff that's in front of that that I'm trying to get done. <laughs> then I'm really retiring from PCs. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're lucky that you do it. Thank yeah, you. Thank You're you. welcome. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, well, I was good time to work in. I'm just looking at the budget. We have $2,000 in computer equipment, maintenance, and then 6500 in computer software support. So. I think the software support is the uh, bookkeeping thing. Is that in the NIMRIC? I do believe so, Software yes. support. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, gotcha. Yeah. And there's another can of worms. Who? NIMRIC. Hmm. <laughs> Talk to anybody that knows computer software about NIMRIC and they'll tell you it's oh, bad. Dear. But it's the only game in town. Right. Well, and now we're going to have to be hooked up to, with them for the whole reappraisal thing because there's nobody else that was even willing to... Give us a bid three years out. So, yeah, they have us over the barrel. I can go. 
Thank you sure. so much. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. See you soon. Yeah. See you Sunday. Yeah. Uh, Monday. Good to meet you. <laughs> Monday. If yeah. not sooner. <laughs> okay. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Robin. We have received the Washington County Sheriff's Department contract for this coming year. The hourly rate stayed the same at $60, but the mileage is going from 0.655 to 0.67 per mile. Right. And there are two copies here for you to fill in how much the amount of dollars that you want to spend and how many hours that you want the deputies to do. How many hours? That's what it's done on there. Mm -hmm. So how, did, how does this work? And then last year, or the year that we're in right now, we did $5,000. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the budget for next year is $5,000 too. Yeah. So we asked them to like patrol or uh, basically enforce speed? That's basically what That's they do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it says answering complaints here, but I'm not sure that what? they. Well, I'm just looking at it says contract conditions include but are not limited to furnishing patrols, answering complaints, which would mean coming when somebody calls. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how much. I don't know what, how much, do. what kind of complaints. I mean, they That's answer complaints if the people call and say that people are driving too fast. I know they did that last year. Mm hmm. But if somebody's dog is loose or people are being vandalized or something, I don't think they respond to that kind of complaint. Yeah, they don't do much enforcement. Mm -hmm. they, so, do serve, they have served papers for the town. They right? do, yeah, but they also charge separately for that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically yeah, that's uh, that's good. five grand a year for speed enforcement. Right. Mm -hmm. And most of that's down in Route 14. So it's, it says the department agrees to furnish deputies for blank hours per week on a regular basis. The hours work per week will be determined according to the contract length and contract amount. So, you know, they're, <laughs> I guess, $5,000 and they can do the math themselves. I think that's what we did last year. I don't think we. Uh, last year, they don't. It only had the five thousand dollars on there. Yeah. It didn't have the number of hours. Nope. Yeah, we need to sign them both, and then okay, one of them. Uh, they'll sign them both and send back one. Oh, they've already signed this one. Okay, they signed that one. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they sent this one too. This is the same copy. One that's just for us. So we'll keep one and send one back. Thank you. And we have also received the term of office for the Forest Fire Warden expires June 30th, 2024. Well, and they, they have suggested Paul Cerruti again. <laughs> but, the, but they're the ones that, that appoint him, so I don't know why they're asking us that they all want, of a sudden. They want they want to make sure the select board approves it. There's a place for oh. the chair to sign and then each of the members. Okay. And they're recommending Paul Cerruti? Yes. Okay. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. And Robin, who is it that sends, is that... Um, it's, it's from the Forest Parks and Recreation. this memo or not along with the town it's from the Vermont Regional Planning Commission that they couldn't hold their last meeting because they didn't have a quorum 
and they're requesting that everybody has a full time and then a backup person. An alternate, yeah, we haven't had an alternate for no, a No, I've been time. trying to see if somebody else on the planning commission mm -hmm. would be willing to do that, but um, no one has stepped forward. So. Okay. Huh. And I also have the access permit for Molly Brock and Sarah Van Hoff. Great. And the, um, to look it up in the records, it's under Molly Kittridge. Mm -hmm. And did we talk about this last meeting? We did, but we, and we thought that opinion? we had, we thought that Robin had the permit, but come to find out Sarah had taken the permit home with her. Right, 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 right. So we didn't have anything, so you, uh, we agreed to sign it, yep. even though we didn't yeah. have it yet. Only two select people, not it. Robin, I didn't receive the memo. I can't think of, I can't I think of what meeting was canceled, so um, maybe they if I could. They sent this June 6th. This is just one? I mean, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. June 3rd. Oh, it's just two people. Oh, she got yeah, it. She, well, I don't know what meeting that to her about it. Yeah, yeah. pretty okay. much. Terrible. Can I pass that on? Oh, oh, well, yeah. yeah, she did get married. Molly Kittredge. I think be your married name. Okay. Yeah, Brock's the she married was. name. What? Brock is the oh, married okay. name. Okay. So she was Van Hoff and uh, okay, oh, whatever. the tack thing. Just the tack. Um, so I guess you should sign me up for okay. the transportation, the tack thing. That we don't have a town rep for that. Um, anyway, I'll wait till you're done with that. Alfie, you want to sign this? You already signed it, I think, your copy, but you can sign that one. So, um, the meeting that Robin just mentioned about with the Sacramento Regional Planning Commission, that's the Transportation Advisory Committee, which the town does not have a representative to. So, I guess you should appoint me. I'd uh, make a motion that we appoint uh, Michael Gray to be a representative on the Transportation Advisory Committee of the Regional Planning Commission. Any discussion? Any the other... Applicants? No? Mm -hmm. Any other nominations? <laughs> nominations. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please Thank say you. aye. 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 Thank you, Michael. So there were no d directions, restrictions, or conditions on this? Uh, just uh, what we talked about last meeting was uh, that I wanted them to go straight across the road uh -huh. uh, on an angle. Yeah. To be minimum four feet down. Minimum of four feet down. Okay. Which for water line that's required anyway. Anyway, that's put it in with all that. Hmm. What do you call that? A perpendicular. Right? Perpendicular. There's not an angle, but that's what I wrote anyway. Thank you. And then the last thing I have is how did you make out with the fire alarm system for here? So I printed the um, paper that we're supposed to sign, and I haven't heard anything back yet. I, okay. uh, I should reach out, but I kind of wanted to have the paper when I do that. Um, so I so no new news on okay. that except that we have this to sign. We have that on the agenda further down there, anyways. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Robin. You're welcome. Well, wait, do you want to report on that phone call you got on the about the dog this morning? Yes, I got a call from town resident up in West Woodbury that one of his neighbors has two large dogs that is jumping on his car and chasing him down the road at least a quarter of a mile. He said he's put in many complaints to the town. He's also had many complaints to the state police and nothing has been done. I don't remember hearing any complaints before. I know, I think this is the first I've heard. Although it actually sounds familiar like something I've heard in conversation. Mm. Mm -hmm. But he is very upset. Do we, so I know we won't say it on the record, but do we have names? Yes. Okay. 
and I tried to call him today, but I had the I had the name wrong. Oh, okay. I had the wrong first name, so. You tried yeah. calling the person with who complained, complained, but it wasn't the person who complained. Mm. Uh, okay. So I tried, yeah. <laughs> and we still don't have a, a dog officer, so I don't know what I would have said, but I just wanted to respond. And, and we know who the owner of the dog is too. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if I had known his name and was able to call him, I would have suggested that he come here tonight. But by the time I realized I had the wrong person, it was four o'clock, and. Mm -hmm. He wasn't in the phone book, so I mean the right person wasn't in the phone book. So. Well, it sounds okay. like we need to keep that on our radar, right? And um, for sure, we need to have a, a dog warden. I mean, yeah. Skip. So in, in that light, I was just wondering if you guys have made any progress on those two ordinances that were mm -hmm. before you guys last April. Mm -hmm. One is the dog wolf hybrid ordinance, and the second is the large domestic animal. Ordinance. Mm -hmm. We have not discussed them since I think it was the flood sort of derailed the conversation. If I remember right, I don't think we've talked about it since. Okay. And I know you put a lot of effort into those. Well, I don't know so much effort, but uh, might be a good time to resurrect those two ordinances and take a fresh look at them. If you lost them, I'm sure I have them in a file somewhere. I have them in a file somewhere. Is that the same? Does that make sense to put that in the next agenda? Well, having a revised and bigger and better ordinance is not going to help us if we can't get an animal control officer. But but we still should do it if it's... And again, the, the, whole, the large animal thing was... You had serious concerns with that anyway. Well, just right? for the record, to be um, fair to tell you guys all now, I don't really believe in adding ordinances to what we already have. Um, so that's kind of my standpoint on it, but I'm happy to talk about it. And we, this is, I would say also a complaint that we got through the health department about Old Corey Road. We have that on the agenda here. Okay. So, in the event that we had a, a dog warden, what, what would they do? <gasps> Good question. Dog. What was it? Impound the dog. Mm -hmm. We and had a, one situation. Like, I mean, presumably, like, I'm sorry to interrupt. Like, that would need to be somebody with some skills, right? Like, mm. uh, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable going up to two aggressive dogs, or presumably aggressive dogs, to impound them. So, like, someone who knows what they're doing, we need to have somebody who knows what they're doing. I, I can tell you what our former animal control officer would do is basically he would go and pay the dog owner a visit and let them know there was a complaint and um, give them a warning and then. Um, and usually a, a written, some kind of written warning, so there's a written record of it. And then if, um, if the incidents continue to happen, then he would impound the dogs. The one situation I can recall when he did take a dog, he did have a... Mosquito. Um, <laughs> they did have a... He had a sheriff with him. Okay. To go and take the dog. And then he was... Kept it in his pound. His, you know, he is our pound keeper mm -hmm. <laughs> and he has a, a kennel mm -hmm. yeah. yeah but he this is kid kim. Hmm? this is kim yeah kim yeah, and, he, and uh, he had so he had the sheriff i mean it was several times that he'd been there finally with the sheriff and, and this wasn't a case where the dog was aggressive or needed to be corralled the dog was tied up and barking all the time so mm -hmm. that's why there right and the person the owner required a sheriff to be present also. Right, yeah. For Kim's protection. Yeah. yeah. And the owner wasn't really a threatening person, but yeah. But mm -hmm. it's still a good idea. Mm -hmm. Well, you never know. You know, people <laughs> well, get crazy about their know. <laughs> Okay. That's all they have. Mm. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next item is the bicycle safety signs, and Michael is here to... Yep. Lead us through that. Um, so I'm Michael Sadler, and in I think it was August of 2021, 
right? <laughs> Skip and I gave um, a really great presentation. It had the full range of human emotions, lots of laughs, lots of crying. It was incredible. If you weren't there, you really missed it. <laughs> um, Wasn't on HCTV? No. Darn. No, but, um, but the content of that presentation was basically Skip and I had identified, and um, you know, this was also um, born out of the town plan, was an effort to identify hot spots or blind spots around Woodbury's back roads that are mm -hmm. popular cyclist roads that uh, some folks treat like their personal rally stages um, or um, are otherwise kind of like super low visibility like Valley Lake Road um, or I think it's either Valley Lake or Wheeler Hill, um, switchbacks, blind curves, um, narrow roads, roads that would otherwise allow a cyclist to take up a larger lane position. State statute would allow a cyclist to take up a larger lane position because of uh, roadway design hazard or um, steep slopes, um, something like that. So we had identified, I think, eight spots um, and kind of walked through the placement of those signs, um, which was, you know, we would identify the center of the hazard and then I think 100 feet out, based, it depends on the, um, on the speed limit of the road in general, but I think for our roads, for our back roads, um, Class three dirt roads, it would be 100 feet based on 35 miles an hour, I think is the speed limit on those roads. So, 100 feet between the sign and the curve? We would identify the hazard, the area mm -hmm. that we thought was the hazard, mm -hmm. and then 100 feet on either side of that would be the proper placement for those signs. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of information in caught up in an email in our old presentation, um, so I would defer to that at the numbers. I think you sent that around yeah. to us, right? Your presentation. And we had some back and forth discussion and I think the, the last thing that we landed on was that there was some discussion, some folks wanted discussion. Well that that presentation, the signage, the placement, the cost was all approved at that meeting in twenty twenty one and then we had a discussion and I think there's just a need for more talking or there's a desire to discuss more what the content of the sign is or um, so I'm here to answer any questions that you have or um, advocate that we either move forward with the approved plan from 2021 or come to an agreement here or keep the discussion going for another meeting, I guess. I think if I remember correctly that we were ready to go ahead with this. It was this simply the, like the verbiage and the signs yeah. that mm -hmm. I think that created a little confusion for all three yeah. of mm -hmm. us. I can't, I can't even remember what it said. The background yeah. is that the, the signs that we had selected uh, said um, full lane something or other. Cyclist may use full lane or bicycle icon may use full lane. Mm -hmm. um, and we chose that sign because Skip and I had found, um, or rather Skip had found, and sent around a study, National Highway Safety study, that basically said share the road signs, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff is not super effective. Mm -hmm. Um, and what we're trying to avoid is, you know, the inherently kind of disadvantaged meeting of a car and a cyclist or a car and pedestrian. You three rightfully brought up that there are a lot of different <laughs> folks that use the roads, mm -hmm. right? So um, I think may use full lane was the thing that was confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, if the uh, riders are um, led to believe that they can ride in the middle of the road and a car comes along and hits them, who's at fault? Um, well, that's the stupid question because of course the car is at fault, but it still seems like, it just seems like you're leading people to believe that the riders have the right to ride in the middle of the road. I realize they do practically, for practical matters all the time, and that's probably the safest place. Yeah. But on some of these curves, it might not be so safe. I well, think that's, I, that's the reason for the signs. Yeah. Uh, some I, of those curves. I also um, think I disagree that the I disagree that the sign would cause a rider to move all the way out into so the, there's the full road width yeah and then as a cyclist um, you know usually what I'm doing when I'm riding my bike is I'm dividing that full road width in half yeah and I'm usually riding on the very right the most right hand portion of that my half mm -hmm. that I can it's the best mm -hmm. part of the road. The, it is the best part of the road. It's the loosest. You can get the squirreliest, the squirreliest you want on, on that, that part of the road. But 
to the me, right, you mean the, the outside? The yeah, the shoulder. Yeah, the center. Yeah, the shoulder, the center yeah. is the safest place on a bicycle. So he's saying this. Well, I, the, center, I, the center, I'm, of the lane, and the center of the road. I think is the. Yes, that's that's the real yeah, question. That's a difference. Yeah. Okay. So if we imagine that we had a double yellow down the middle mm -hmm. of all of our, I think they're they're Alfie. They're like they're like lane and a half, lane and three quarters width. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's mm -hmm. not it's not like a true two lane road, right. but. Cyclists may use full lane kind of signals to me as a cyclist that um, I would be able to move. I'm usually riding when I'm riding single, when I'm riding by myself, I'm usually riding right on the shoulder, mm -hmm. right on the, the, the line between really uncompacted gravel and our nice, mm -hmm. nicer road base. And that would basically signal to me that I can take maybe one or two of my own body width and be out more in my own lane, not in the mm -hmm. middle of the road mm -hmm. or in the oncoming lane, but mm -hmm. take more of my own lane so mm -hmm. that I can maybe avoid some of those hazards or get a better angle to be able to see around mm -hmm. a hazard or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily agree that it would cause cyclists to ride in the middle of the road. Okay, because that was, was, wasn't clear to me whether yeah. you're talking right sure. lane versus left lane. They can have all of that or the, the traveled lane, the whole thing. I, so. I don't think the sign mentions cyclists. That's not in my... It's and then bicycles may use, use, full, use lane. full lane or yeah. something. It didn't bicycles really may cyclists. use full lane. That's what yeah. it says. It has bicycle... Uh, yeah, bicycle a icon may use full lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm and I'd be open to expanding that to bicycle, pedestrian, equestrian, if that's feels uh, like it's... Mm, yeah. So I feel like I... In my ideal world, I'd go the opposite direction, sure. and I would just... Rather than adding... Um, I feel like it's just way simpler to say caution blind corner mm -hmm. and then that covers everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you guys considered that. Was that one of the things that you looked at that didn't have as much effect as... Well, that's, that's not to the point. The point is to protect bicyclists. When Specifically. Making, making these sharp corners and the view is mm -hmm. restricted from motorized vehicles. That's... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. not simply saying that the road is, you know, is, is restricted in terms of sight line. It's uh -huh. to protect bicycles. And it's to alert motorized vehicles that there are bicycles, could be bicycles, around this hairpin mm. corner. And as Michael indicated, we did extensive research on this, mm. you know, scouring NHTSA, you know, for their information, for signage, and where these signs should be placed. So the study was not done in a vacuum. It was, and go ahead. And we also, it, and just to, to, you know, further the, it, it wasn't done in a vacuum. It actually responds to the, um, there's a really specific call out on page three of our town plan where um, we, as a planning commission in the plan, we say ensure bicyclists, pedestrian, and pedestrians are accommodated, particularly in the village centers and Route 14 corridor. So, that you know, maintain Woodbury Woodbury's roads to a high standard for safety, efficiency, and environmental integrity. Although this particular statement limits it to the village center, it was an easy leap to say, all right, well, we have some really hot impact. We have some some hot spots that we could take mm -hmm. care of right now, specifically for cyclists and pedestrians. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's not really a pedestrian car safety issue mm -hmm. as far as I think we discussed mm -hmm. and we fo then, then we focused more in on cyclists. So that's why it was um, cyclists only. One of the reasons why they weren't installed at that time frame is because the uh, road foreman actually didn't want to install them. He threw up a red herring and said that the town cannot install traffic signs in their roads. Mm -hmm. And there's a state statute that clearly says that a town road is a town road, and they can install traffic signs. Mm. So that was kind of a red herring that was thrown up. And then, I don't know, I might have left the board or something like that. Or I was on the planning commission then. And it just died a twist and mm. slow death. <laughs> well, you guys brought this to us before the flood, and then that kind of derailed everything, too. Um, I, you've done the research. Um, I still feel like a blind corner sign is my ideal, but you have done way more work on this, um, and I believe oh. that your research is correct. Lizzie, why do you say that? I'm curious. I just think there's been a lot of talk about confusion about the sign that you guys have chosen, and I feel like if 
the three people I know of who've looked at it have all been initially confused. What's that going to do to any random driver? Um, so to me, I feel like blind corner is just a way clearer message. But if it's true that the research points that people don't pay attention and don't slow down, and it gives less protection for cyclists, uh, like I think we should move forward with this. I, okay. I don't think it should be held up. So um, I would be. There are more than eight spots on Woodbury's Class Three roads where cyclists and pedestrians, anyone who's not in a car is potentially disadvantaged because of a road design hazard. Mm -hmm. I would be happy in the future to try a different strategy to say, if we identify a couple more of these spots, um, to say, let's give another signage a shot to see if that works a little bit better. Um, the, I think we also talked, we talked about like, and thank you. I really appreciate moving forward with these with these eight hotspots, and thank I you bet. so much for consideration. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, but the signage should inspire, I think, a little bit of. I think when when people see signs about look out, this road has a particular characteristic. Your immediate reaction, or my immediate reaction, is of course it does. I know this road. Like I know everything about this road. I drive it all the time. But the introduction of, oh, there's another person on the road, there's another user of the road that may be using a wider width than you think, or um, they may be in the middle, of, and not in the middle of the travel way, but in their lane, um, that might inspire some folks to slow down a little bit more. And it's particularly embarrassing, Lizzie, because I think it was only like two weeks ago that you caught me, and, me and Alex Peltz riding two abreast on a road, which is not okay. But, um, I thought that was our secret. It wasn't no, it's okay. It's our secret. Um, but that's also sort of like that's less space. Like me, Alex, and I riding two abreast on a road is less space than I think may use full lane entitles a cyclist to use. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, can I make a motion that we go ahead with the signs as they have been presented to us? Motion been made. Um, any further discussion? Do we have any idea if costs, Afi, have you looked at, have you had a chance to look at this at all? Um, I would be very curious to know if pricing has changed. I'm sure it on the signs. It was about eight hundred dollars, wasn't it? So yeah, you cost like that, that yeah. you got, huh? But that was just for the signs, not for the pole. Poles are probably more expensive. That's where they get you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to have the breakaway sign with an anchor. You have to have an anchor and then the sign. Okay. It. So if a car hits it, it folds away and not into the windshield. Okay. That's where mm. the money is. It's yeah. The, the anchor and the post. The sign mm. itself is probably reasonable. Yeah, but it's the expenses. Mm -hmm. There's going to be the posts. I think we chose we chose an off the shelf we chose an off the shelf that's sign that's already that, that's already like readily available that meets design standards and stuff like that. So um, that's the only thing that I'd be curious about. Mm -hmm. And so you're suggesting that maybe we wait on the motion until you have pricing. Um, I think that the I think it would be like. Nice to know pricing. I think that everybody might appreciate getting pricing, although I can't anticipate that it's more than 15 or 20 percent difference, which would only bring us, I think, would still bring us below like 15 or 1700 bucks for 16 signs. Um, and I don't know, Alfie, what it costs to. If that's if there's additional cost to the town to install the signs, or if that's just part of routine kind of road maintenance. Uh, well, we would do it do it ourselves. We yeah. take away from other projects. Okay. Um, so my question is, would that would that come out of the highway budget? The my highway sign budget, because yes. that's a pretty big hit for a budget that's already not enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was that what, you, had you guys had any conversation about where the money would come from? No, I think that we had the initial figure approved, uh -huh. and then the, the, we hit our, we hit this speed bump afterwards. So the select board approved the, the previous amount of money, mm -hmm. and I wonder, just for the sake of, like, transparency and spending, what the ad would be in 2024. 
to that mm -hmm. initiative. So yeah, I think it, I think it was actually in the budget at one point, but uh, okay. but it's not anymore. We've got two thousand dollars in there. I'm happy that it's moving. Year. I'm happy that it's moving forward. <coughs> but <coughs> not like, but I don't know the price myself. So uh -huh. what are we? What are we? Next, can I make a suggestion that um, so if there's if there's eight signs. Yeah. Or eight sites. Mm -hmm. That means sixteen signs. Right? Yeah. So that's sixteen calls, sixteen mm -hmm. I can get a price for that. Thank for, you. For the sign and the anchors. See what that's going to cost. You already have the price for the signs themselves. Yeah, in twenty twenty one dollars. So we okay. can do, we can do, I can double check and we yeah. can we can send that out. But. <coughs> I mean, just to keep the ball rolling, I think, yeah. you know, I think everybody would want to know what it's going to cost before yeah. they make a final decision. So We're trying to find what we have. Uh, yeah. what the okay. How long do you think that would take? Um, would it take like a day to do the install for the three of you? Do you think longer than that? Uh, it's probably a day. Okay. Uh, providing the locations are clear. Yeah. In our minds, you know what I mean. I don't know if you can do. GPS or some somehow to, to I think we have maps. maps don't we? Yeah, there were maps. Yeah, other maps. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we have maps, and I can um, I can put something in. Um, I can either put a GPS pin down, or if you all use like Esri or ArcMap or any GIS kind of um, like. We could use GIS, I think. Okay. The signs are. Um, from trafficsign.com, 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you have a picture of the sign? Because I don't remember yeah. the bicycle icon. I just remember mm -hmm. Mayu's full name, which to me would be confusing to any. So uh, as of uh, May 13th, you had only spent $919 out of your $2,000 budget for FY24. So maybe you could buy some poles or something before July one. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Unless you have plans, do you have other uh, plans for signs? Uh, no, I just kind of buy them as uh, as they run yeah. over. Or so. That mm -hmm. doesn't seem like the one I remember that you chose. Could that be? I don't remember anything about changing Change lanes to pass. Maybe that's the one. That's it. That's I think it. we have a catalog. <laughs> <laughs> you can get one. Okay. Yeah. So I wonder if that could have a pedestrian icon also. But, yeah. I think that there are places you can go to get signs printed however which way you want them. Yeah. Um, but cost becomes a bigger cost okay. become mm. a bigger issue than that. Mm. And if we went mm. the custom sign route, I would definitely suggest getting a cost estimate beforehand. Mm -hmm. mm. So those are still, you just looked, those are still 30 a piece. The, there are a range of prices depending on size. Mm. And I, it would take me a little bit of digging to see the catalog page that Skip and I picked out. Okay. We have until the next meeting to mm -hmm. okay. figure that out. If you don't mind. No, absolutely not. Great, thank you. Um, I might not, if it's okay to wrap it up over email um, and have you all make a motion, that would be fine too. But. Yeah, I don't think you need to come back to okay. the meeting. Unless, unless you, you want yeah. to. <laughs> so there, there, there is, like I said, there is $1,000 left in the budget for FY24. Mm -hmm. okay. if, but that's three weeks. But he could buy some poles or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Use that. Right, Alfie? Uh, yeah, I could certainly use that. You could, I mean, you could spend $1, that. $1,000 isn't going to go far, though, if you buy the anchors and poles. Yeah, well. But Still, what we, yeah, we and then next, and then board. next year we have another two thousand dollars plus whatever else you need. I mean, you have to. Yeah, if you need well, signs, just, you have to buy signs. Absolutely. <laughs> and if there's not enough money in that in that line item, I have to take it from somewhere else. Or but go over. I think speed limit signs <laughs> yeah. and stop signs yeah. and yield signs are up there in the priority list. Mm -hmm. That's the only yeah. question I have. I, I'm all mm -hmm. about supporting bicycles riding our roads, but uh, there's also a money factor. Yeah, well, you have to buy what you need. So. So did we want to we want to see 
it sounds like we wanted to see pricing for potentially two different options. One was the previous cyclist may use full lane, and then the add alternate of cyclists and pedestrians may be useful. I don't think, I don't think I feel pedestrians like the bicycle covers everything because if mm -hmm. you're looking out for bicyclists, you're also okay. not going to hit mm -hmm. a pedestrian. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pedestrians um, can jump in the woods if they. That's true. I've that's done, done it. <laughs> Getting out of the way quick. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'll put together uh, retail pricing for 16 signs, mm -hmm. okay. and we'll go from there. Does that sound? Yep. I'll okay. have, by next meeting, I'll have prices for the posts and the, the anchors as well. Okay. Great. Oh, cool. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Have a good evening. Thanks for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we? Well, that is a nice segue into our road mm -hmm. report. Mm -hmm. Looks like county uh, county road extension is uh, underway. It's very much underway. Yeah. In fact, it's almost done. Nice. That's great. Uh, we've got gravel on the whole thing uh, after filling the, the ruts. James, are, would you close that door, please? We are waiting you. on a response from the state for the hydraulic study to change that one culvert. Mm -hmm. And there are also, there's also one other culvert that I would like to change. In that road? On the same road. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't know if I should just change it and it should be covered by FEMA. I would certainly upgrade it from what's there, but I don't want to do that without. So that would be a no. mitigation project then? That would be a mitigation. Yeah. So you'd just go to a higher volume. So FEMA would wouldn't be a bigger pipe. Mm -hmm. Bigger pipe. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a bigger pipe. So I just wanted to make sure before I mm -hmm. change the culverts, I wanted to make sure that all the. Can you replace those culverts with the town's excavator? Um, yes. I mean, I hate to keep renting that big one if we're waiting for VTrans to do something we don't know when they're going to do it. Right, a long wait. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, we've we've rented it for a month. Yeah. And so we're like, that's two weeks, so we got two more weeks. Oh, that. okay. Um, I do have another project that just came about, which is another part of my uh, questions. Okay. Um, where you could use that? This is where I could use that machine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, because it's got more reach, and mm -hmm. this particular job is definitely going to need the reach. Mm -hmm. It's in West Woodbury. Mm -hmm. So I've actually purchased the culverts, what I think would be the size, uh, just so I could have them. Mm -hmm. Because when we're working, I want to have what we need to have, mm -hmm. so I bought them. Um, and we can figure out the money later. It's either come out of if FEMA doesn't cover it, we will have to cover it out of our own budget uh, one way or another. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I have them ready to go. So, and would the hydrologic study that we're waiting on address the the other culvert that you're? It won't. It won't. Okay. No, it's a different. It's yeah. a different stream. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't order the hydraulic study for that. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you have to order it, or do it you doesn't. not need to? I mean, to? we can do it. I think we can do it on our own uh -huh. and you said it would be a mitigation we could claim it through FEMA as a mitigation because this is the county road extension yes yeah. if you, you're upsizing a, it you mean upsized, yeah. right mm -hmm. so the second one we can do mm -hmm. I think without any problems mm -hmm. I just wanted to let everybody know before I did it the mm -hmm. first one that we were waiting for the hydraulic we absolutely have to wait on that one mm -hmm which we can do it with a smaller excavator, it'll take longer, mm -hmm. but we can do it uh, when that hydraulic study comes in. Mm -hmm. does, and does FEMA require the hydraulic study? For something like this, yeah. Yeah, okay. Similar to the hydraulic studies that are required for town highways 23 mm -hmm. and 24 for those bridge mm -hmm. replacements. Yeah. But not necessarily for, the mitigate, for a mitigation project. For a mitigation project. So we would have to have a hydrologic study mm -hmm. for the second culvert that Alfie for, is talking about. For the county for the first extension. Mm. Mm. Right. So they likely, 
Yeah, so how, how do we go about doing that? Well, you only need the H and H study if you're yeah. going to use FEMA money to pay for it. Mm -hmm. If you just do it and use town money, um, well, it still could be FEMA covered by FEMA. The second culvert, right? The smaller right. one. Yeah, do an H and H study. Oh, you have to do an H and H study for both yeah. of them. Okay, mm -hmm. which is going to be time, which oh. means we can't do it now. We no. have to go yeah. and visit it, and so if you don't put it in for FEMA, you can just do it. Well, just do it. This project is queued up for an extension, go figure. Uh, so if the work isn't done this year, I'll just write for an extension mm -hmm. in December to kick that project out 18 months. Yeah, but it shouldn't be, shouldn't need an extension, I mean. Well, if you don't get the H&H &H study done, then we, you run the risk of paying out of Woodbury's mm -hmm. pocket mm -hmm. for the labor to install the culvert. Mm -hmm and cost of the culvert. Right. And anything cost. that goes along with that. So you're saying that yeah. both of those culverts on County Road Extension need H and H in order to get FEMA coverage. Yes. yes. Just the larger culvert. Just the larger one. The okay. One. I'm so confused. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I feel like I'm hearing both things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I probably confused you. I they both need to be uh, H and H good study on that. On both in, order, in order to be covered by FEMA. Okay. Yeah. If we want to exchange, replace them ourselves with our own money, we can do that. Okay. We can probably fudge the, the machine time, you know, by because we can just mix it in with all the rest of the work. I mean, we've been two weeks there working now yeah. on mm -hmm. with that machine. If we just don't charge FEMA for the culvert. Hmm. So the whole rest of the road it gets done. The second one, the one that we've already ordered the hydraulic study for, mm -hmm. that we need to wait for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it's already in queue yeah, yeah. in the state. Mm -hmm. So am, we... I, am I speaking out of line here? Or well, the culvert is... that you haven't ordered the H and H study for, are you replacing the culvert with a larger culvert? Yes. Then you need an H and H study. Unless we do it and just pay for it. Unless we do it our, on our own. Unless you do it on your own, yeah. right. But if we have to wait on one, we might as well wait on two, right? Is there, I mean, I know you've got the machine. Is it, does it seem like it makes more sense to just go for it? Um, to me, it makes sense to, for the town to buy the culvert out of their own money and, and put it in. Okay. The, the, the lower one. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The one that I didn't realize was a problem before when this all started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I noticed it as I was working it. It's it's clearly too small. It's only a 15, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's super. It's just too small. Mm -hmm. Same with the one that caused this, which is the one that we've ordered a hydraulic study for. That's gotcha. the one that caused this whole problem mm -hmm. because it's too small and limbs and stuff got into it and got overtaken. Okay. So that one. I definitely feel like we should wait for the hydraulic study. They can tell us what size to put in. This, the, for the one further down, it's a 15. I'm recommending a two foot. Put in a two foot culvert, mm. and then we're done. I know it's big yeah. enough, mm -hmm. even without the um, hydraulic. Okay, so now that you explained it like that, so do that. And when I put the essential elements of information, documentation together for FEMA, I'll just say you replace that culvert from an 18 inch to a two footer, two footer to a two footer. And if they come back at me, then that's fine. I'll oh. sort that out. Yeah. But the larger one, that it's a state requirement that you have that H and H study. Yes. We definitely need that. Yeah, yeah. yeah need I can wait. I agree I, with that. Yeah, I think yeah. I can take take care of FEMA just if you're upgrading it by six inches. I think that's so you just on the same road you can't say, can we add this one to that first H and H study? I mean, well, it was caused by waiting. the same storm, right? Right, but there's quite a bit to ordering a hydraulic study. Oh, okay. You've got to meet the guy out there, and you've got to, you know, show him the lo mark the location, and, and then you get on a waiting list, which oh. we've been on for this caller. We've been on a waiting list for, what, Michael? Mm -hmm. a couple months Over now. a month, a couple, yeah, maybe yeah. two months. Yeah. Hmm. And it's not done yet. So I think to add another one is not going to, oh, okay. you know, yep. it could be uh, longer. Yeah. Might get us to do it. 
Yeah, I mean, especially if you it. think the amount will still pay, let's do it. So what if we, what if uh, VTrans came out and the colors were already in, would they refuse to do a study? He's only going to put one in. Mm. He's not going to put the other one in. No, I'm only suggesting doing one. Yeah. Okay. The one that we've already ordered the hydraulic mm -hmm. study for, we'll wait on. Because that's already in the state's queue. And, mm -hmm. and the big machine's already there. The machine is there. And so you could just do that and it would be faster. But he's not going to do the that one. That's the one you're going to wait on. No. No, no. Uh, there's two culverts. Yeah. One we absolutely have to wait for. Yeah. We're going to have to revisit that one regardless. The yeah. second one, I feel like we can go with the bigger culvert, put it in now that the machine's there. And then we're only going back for that one culvert after we get the okay. hydraulic study. Mm -hmm. And then you and can do, wrap that up and then take the big machine up to, to West, Wood West Woodbury. Which is the next yeah. item that I want. To talk okay, about. let's go. Uh, <laughs> let's move. <laughs> so it's been brought to my attention that there's a couple of spots on, on what's the name of that road now? Cape Brook Road. Cape Brook Road. Mm -hmm. Uh, that the brook is washing the bottom of the road and making it collapse mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And people have con are complaining because there's kind of a hole in the road and they have to steer around it and if they meet mm -hmm. somebody. So right now I've got cones and barricades mm -hmm. up okay. to protect them. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen is stone, what I call stone bank hardening, which I'll put riprap down over the bank to stop the water from eating out mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. And there's also a culvert, which a previous road commissioner told me he got permission from the planning commission to add on to the culvert. <laughs> <laughs> That's BS. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, without sounding <laughs> names, I think they don't know what we're yeah, talking about. Which one are you two former chairman of the PC? <laughs> No, this was a regional planning commission. Oh, 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 oh that's oh, probably right. true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally well, not. What are you talking about, Alex? Yeah. Well, I uh, thought I didn't have to say. <laughs> 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 um, so anyway, the that's the tricky part is because this particular culvert is a squash pipe, mm -hmm. and they're hard to get. Oh. Um, I've told a guy to find me one and so far he's he hasn't but he's still working on it mm -hmm. um, the reason for extending this culvert and I tend to agree with it is that it puts the water out into the main brook mm. right now we've got a brook running there's a brook running here there is a culvert coming here so the water comes out of the culvert and it runs down the side of the road if we mm. extend this culvert, it goes out into the main brook mm -hmm. instead of having two brooks. Mm. Right now, we've got two brooks running beside mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. So if we extend this culvert out, it gets it into the main brook. Mm -hmm. And then this whole section of the road, which is probably 200 feet, 300 feet, mm. can be filled in with just regular common fill to protect the road, mm -hmm. harden the road. Mm -hmm. um, and so my question is, can we add another project to FEMA at this point? No. All the okay. damage inventories were due to FEMA December 4th, 2023. Okay. Mm. Fair enough. So we Let have me to take that as a note, though. We have to do this uh, out of our budget. Then. Mm -hmm. Which. In my opinion, it has, something has to be done, mm -hmm. regardless. Something yeah. has to be done because it's it's a well-traveled road and it's a safety issue. So there were no projects on West Woodbury Road for the uh, flood were there? Uh, yes, there were. But not Cape Brook Road. Mm -hmm. But who knows it's the difference? Cape Brook Road is the one where it's there. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just above the town line. Okay. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. Well, what about this here, Cape Brook Road 02? So, Skip, I'm on your chart. Yeah, I'm trying to find Cape Brook Road. On page I know four. It's somewhere. So, Cape Brook Road 
Yeah. There's two of them. Road, side of the road washed out due to flooding. Mm. Blah, 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 blah. Side of the road washed out due to flooding. So we could have that. Mm. And that's not what Alfie's talking about? This specific? What's on there is not. It's not. It's different. How could, yeah. It's a different well, issue. Let me ask. And it can't be added to Because I thought I remembered at one point we were talking about sections of road. You could have like a few washouts and it be one right. inventory item. That's so, correct. Mm -hmm. So could this be it like. It could be one project. So Cakework Road, two damage inventories, distinct ones. So they, FEMA lumped that into one project. So these locations, side of road washed out. Uh, that has a discrete, not long, map point. Okay. So they rely on that. If, if it's something in addition to that, I'll ask them. We have a meeting on Wednesday. I'll bring this up as part of our meeting to see if we can include another caper mm -hmm. road mm -hmm. issue. In the meantime, it sounds like you have to do it anyway. So Thank just you. go for it. Anyways, yeah. I'll keep track of the machine time and material. Same as I do as if it was a female project. Okay. Pictures. And they don't do Pictures. site visits anymore, right? <laughs> Pardon me? FEMA doesn't do site visits anymore. They're afraid to come out. <laughs> it's pretty wild out here in Woodbury. <laughs> um, okay, so that answers my question there. Um, as soon as I get this one culvert in, uh, on the county road extension, I'll move the big excavator to West Woodbury. And you here in hopes that somebody will find you a squash culvert? Yes, yes. There is some other. There is other work there that I can do without the meantime, without yeah. waiting for the Did you just close that section of road? I mean, people don't have to use that road, uh, right? No, they do have to. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, if they, but I, but people who live on West Woodbury Road can go down another way. They can go Brown Hill. Brown, Brown Hill. Yeah. So if I you have think to... the work that I I think I can do it with just one lane. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll put barricades mm -hmm. up so that people mm -hmm. can just stay on one lane. It's kind of a little bit of a corner, but it's mm -hmm. sweeping, and I think mm -hmm. you can see. You know, um, so I think I can do it without mm -hmm. closing. Um, what are there maybe two residents, maybe three on Cape Brook Road? Uh, yes, but then you get once you get up to West Woodbury, yeah, there's just a lot more. Yeah, yeah, but those people can go once you get up there, they can go the other way. Yeah, if they need. Uh, hmm. So that's sort of where we're at. We put a lot of time and material into the West County Road. Uh, used up all the material that I got from Callis. Hmm. Um, and then we had to purchase some regular bank run gravel for the filling process. Mm -hmm. And now we've coated it with with uh, three inch minus. Mm. And that's what I'm gonna leave it at because it's a it's low travel road mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that stuff really binds together good. Mm -hmm. So if we do get more rain it'll it'll hold up mm. without. Um, so we should be able to finish that. We'll be done this week. I think, except with the exception of the one call we're waiting on the hydraulic study for. Mm -hmm. And then we can revisit that when it comes. So, and then next week we'll be up to West Woodbury mm -hmm. trying to put out fires up there. <laughs> Don't go way down to the end, the south end, because you might get chased by some vicious dogs. Mm, I hear that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, any other questions about roads? <sighs> Let's see. Mm -hmm. What's that? Right. Nothing. No. Thank, Thank you. Me. Thank you very much. Skip, you're up. Re recovery officer's report. <laughs> so in front of you is the new damage inventory project number report. Did I get it one? Yeah. Oh. You can share that. Sure. I think I dropped them. You should have them done, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I spoke too. 
Mm-hmm. Sorry. That's, that's, oh. <laughs> you got another I'd like it back, though. Oh. Okay. okay. Just for the numbers. So this yeah. is as of today. Uh, as you can see, FEMA is working very slowly. We have one project which was sent to them. That's Old Quarry Road and Blake Hill Road. All the documentation uh, had been sent to them. The project manager for FEMA sent all that information to the CRC Center, Consolidated Resource Center, which is in Puerto Rico. And they go over what our project manager from FEMA sends them. And then they uh, concur with the information or send questions back. So that's been sitting there since April 15th. And it's supposed to take three weeks. So we have a meeting with FEMA on Wednesday, and that's one of the agenda items. What's going on with those two roads? Are there other agenda items? I mean, haven't you covered everything else oh, five no. times? No. No? No, okay. no dear. I have the agenda, and I'll just oh. read it off to you. No. <laughs> um, so in FEMA's hands now are these small permanent work project certifications and acknowledgments. So when the project manager from FEMA says, all of his work is done, and the information is at the CRC. We, as the applicants, have to certify that all the information we send them is correct. And some kind of hesitant to not send them the correct information because it's a fine up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars if we don't send them correct information. And tail time too, so we don't want to spend yeah. any time yeah. there. So most recently, we sent Cabot Road. And the signature box for them with the small permanent walk for work project certifications and acknowledgements. So that increases, if you go to the last page, page five, that increases what FEMA has in their hands to $60,640.41. So I'm hoping that, that FEMA moves beyond where we are now. FEMA is now stuck on phase four of this, this document, which is project worksheet. So they're stuck on phase four of all these projects. And until they move to phase five, which is to review and sign what's called a subgrant agreement, we won't see any of these money. So they're just, you know, I know they're busy, but, you know, uh, anyhow. So until we see a subgrant agreement, you know, we cannot expect any money to come flowing into the mm. But as it stands, we have $60,640 in queue. So hopefully when we have this meeting on Wednesday, we'll get more of an answer. And I'll be sure to send everyone an email update if they give any positive response to where this money is in the pipeline. You know, because this is mm. starting to be an issue. So again, Woodbury Share, when everything's all totaled totally up, so we have $342,164 in change out there. FEMA Share and the State of Vermont Share, total 334637 And so Woodbury Share would be $7,527 if everything goes well. So, agenda for uh, Wednesday meeting. The meeting was supposed to be uh, on the 5th yeah, last week. Yeah, thank you. And so, Diana, if you don't have them, no, it's take okay. his well, copy. It's okay. It's he okay. doesn't want his. Chris doesn't want his? Uh, 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 what? Where's Harry? <laughs> it's okay. You don't want to take this home. <laughs> I appreciate all the work you put into it. That is not a, like, it's a tremendous amount of work and I do it. But yeah, it's just, Diana keeps all my stuff yeah. for me. <laughs> That's why they call me the clerk. So this meeting was supposed to take place last Thursday. Oh. But the FEMA project manager forgot that he had a meeting last mm. Thursday. So mm. we're hoping to have it on Wednesday. And we're hoping to get him out here just to sit down and 
go over our projects and to see each other in the flesh. Failing so that, we're going to have a Zoom conference call, which is good. It so, will be the same people that were here last time? Or? Oh, it'll just be one of them. One mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, Terry Hulsey, he's a gentleman mm -hmm. from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully he'll come up. So the projects that he's working on are Old Quarry Road and Blake Hill Road, and they're at the CRC, Consolidated Resource Center, Woodbury Hard Rail Trail, and we'll get back to that in a couple of minutes. As Terry said he's working on to complete the essential elements of information. That's labor materials and equipment usage. Uh, North and South Parks, at CRC pending QA review, and they were looking for uh, information regarding insurance claims, just to be certain that the parks and the land in the parks were not covered by any insurance for them. So mm -hmm. we sent them 11 documents provided by uh, the Regional Planning Commission and by Robin, each of them stipulating that the land is not covered. The uh, radar speed control sign, again, Terry is working uh, to finish those essential elements of information. And he's made a request for a tabletop site inspection. So... Uh, <clears throat> tabletop what? Site inspection. What does that mean? That's one of my questions to him today, though. Please explain a tabletop site yeah. inspection. Mm. That's going over the photos that we've already sent him and the before and after photos and say, yeah, here it is, it's done. Mm -hmm. I guess, I don't know. Not a clue. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I hear that. I've learned a lot of new mm -hmm. terms. Every time, you, every time you meet with these people, it's yeah. something new. Mm -hmm. So he goes on to say, North and South Park is closed. Okay. I don't believe that. <laughs> and uh, Cabot Road is pending peer review. And he said the projects held up multiple items related to mitigation statement of work. And he said, Terry will provide information to the So for this one, you can go on to Grant's board and look at all of them and see the history of who's worked on it, what they've done. Mm. So this Cabot Road has had three peer reviewers since it's hit the CRC. Mm. They keep getting reassigned. Is that the? Reassigned. Oh. That's not so, the bridges. That's no, this is getting. something different. Mm. Mitigation, so we'll be discussing mitigation questions concerning Town Highways 23 and 24 bridge on Wednesday. And uh, for that mitigation, I'll add to the agenda County Road Extension, the larger culvert, which we'll have an H&H &H study for, and we'll discuss that mm. at that Okay. Uh, obligated projects. So when you go onto the grants portal, you click on a little pull down file and you can see all your obligated projects. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that the money has been approved from FEMA and now the Department of Public Safety, the state of Vermont will send you a sub grant agreement. So none of our projects are obligated yet. Can I ask you, do you know how other towns are faring in this process? Uh, anecdotally, I heard that Hardwick has one project that has been obligated. Mm -hmm. That's okay. just anecdotally. Okay. So not much better. Who's doing Probably. their work? Probably not much better than... Probably not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are some other, you know, mundane issues like this small permanent work certification and acknowledgements form. When do we fill it out? we send it directly to you or do we put it on the grants board? Mm -hmm. What I've been doing is putting it on the grants board and sending it to him in hopes to uh, cover all the bases. So that's our pretty full agenda for mm -hmm. next Wednesday. And if I can get back to the Woodbury Hardwick Rail Trail. So part of the damage inventory was, because of that big landslide, Alfie and his crew based on an a engineering study by DeWolf and Associates, moved part of that rail trail back onto bedrock. Well, when they read that, they at the CRC read that, uh, it sent a 
don't know, tremors through them or something. That's the best way I could describe it. And here's one of the emails I got today. It says, good day, the applicant's engineer, we, we're the applicant, engineer is DeWolf, will need to upload into the project the before and after pre-disaster versus new construction to identify the spatial extent of the ground disturbance. We've done that that long. We've been on that. The site plans will also include GPS coordinates. We've done that. What we haven't done is give them the depth of grubbing. So I looked at that and I said, depth of grubbing. What does that mean? You know, I've learned about riprap, I've learned about bank of gravel, three quarter minus, quarter minus. Here's a new term. Depth of grubbing. Mm -hmm. You know, I see skunks grubbing for grubs, yeah. you know, things like that. So I did a Google search, and so the depth of grubbing, I guess, is you when you pull a stump out, you know, you make sure that all the vegetation associated with the stump is gone, all the vegetation underneath that. And correct me if I'm wrong. And so we have to give them the depth of grubbing. Good luck with that. You know. Well, if you're scraping down to bedrock, well, we need the depth. <laughs> mm. how, how far are you? I must admit, I, when I saw the notation of uh, relocating the trail, I was kind of surprised because it makes it sound like it could have been totally relocated, but it was just, just moved widened. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. moved over or yeah. Yeah. something. Yeah. And the site plans, you know, uh, depth of grubbing. Identification of those locations where tree removal occurred, root balls, mm -hmm. detailed methods of repairs, regards to move further into the bedrock of the mountain to improve stabilization, and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So wow. I reached out to our friends at to Wolf, and they have been really helpful. Okay. They sent back this, you know, four-page email with their study and what they've done. So I fired that off back to FEMA today at about quarter to five and said, here you go. You know, oh, they the, did do a study. I didn't realize it. It wasn't a formal yeah, study, yeah, of course, yeah. per se. It was a $2,500 study that yeah. came back in the form of an email with photos. Yeah. So I mean, they sent somebody out to look at it. And, and the site visit, right? Yeah. yeah. The site visit. And it was comprehensive. So. Yeah. You know, I didn't. I read it, and there's nothing that says depth of grubbing. So I hope we don't get hung up with that. <laughs> and I, I think so. So, in essence, that's all we have. We're kind of in a holding pattern, which is mm. frustrating to Danielle and mm. I because, you know, she's put in a lot of work mm. on this, and you know, it's just aggravating that we keep sometimes getting the same questions. They lose information, so we have to resubmit. And, you know, it's, it's tough for the town, too, because you guys are going to be setting your tax rate. And yeah. if we have some of this money coming in, It'd and be we nice. can anticipate when the rest of it would come in, it would make budgeting a lot easier. So I'm going to keep at them. I don't want to be too much of a squeaky wheel, but you know, I'll be persistent. Mm -hmm. So any questions? No. Thank you. Keep Just want to know what tabletop inspection is. <laughs> a tabletop site inspection. Yes. Uh, the, I think they need to go on to that rail trail again. Well, I would be surprised if they would be able to walk back up that grade once they walk down it. <laughs> trying to walk back up that. Walk Some up. of these guys aren't in the best. Oh, really? Is it, uh, is it steep? Pardon me? Is it steep? Have you tried it? No, not yeah. for years and years and years. Yeah, we'll get your attention. Well, trail I tried to ski. 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 No, the slide. Oh, oh like that. Oh, my goodness. No. No, no, I'm talking to drive slow on Route 14. The slide is yeah. right. yeah. Walking back up that grade. I skied at one time. Yeah. I was I skied it one t on cross country skis and that was kind of sad because I expected a long slow downhill and really it was like walking most of the way. That was a long time ago. You should try it again. Yeah. Oh yeah, I should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once my knee gets fixed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank you, Skip. Thank you. <clears throat> 
Hmm. All right. Our next uh, item is our memorandum of understanding for the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department. And uh, this was emailed to you all. Yep. Yep, I read it. It's pretty much the same, right? Same thing, just updated numbers. For updated numbers? Yep. Which numbers are... Uh, there, let me correct myself. By numbers, I meant dates. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, the exact numbers uh, are not, haven't been put into the MOU since I've been on the department. Yeah, no, they, yeah, the numbers are in the budget. Yeah. This just has to do with operational stuff. Correct. Does this require a motion? Yeah, I think we should have a motion. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, sign the Memorandum of Understanding between the Woodbury Volunteer Fire and Rescue, Inc. and the Town of Woodbury. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of signing the MOU, please say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Can some copies get signed? Yes. Um, and I will take both of them with me tonight and have Paul sign them tomorrow. And I, will I only have one copy. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I will, uh, I'll bring your guys' copy to the town office. Okay. And I think this... That's today. We signed that, I think. Right, time. but we need to give this back to Robin. To, oh, some... Lizzie didn't sign this one. No, not yet. I'll change it again. Oh, yeah, this is a sheriff's one. Yeah. Right. Oh, am I supposed to sign both? Sheriff ones? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. We keep one and... Or and that goes to Robin, too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Robin will send one back and file one. And then you're so taking both of these. I'm going to take both of them with me, and then I will have Paul sign them tomorrow night because he couldn't make it tonight. And then I will rub off your guys' copy at the town office. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, the sheriff's one, I think you need to put that five thousand dollars on the next line down. I thought I did. Maybe I did. Oh yeah, that's hours per week. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Cross that out then. If I put it on. Uh, should we leave the hours per week blank? They did last year. And they'll, fill it, they'll figure it out based on the There's rate. no way we can figure it out. Is the other copy something? Uh, with you, I thought I'd give it to you. Yeah, right there. Jake, Jake. Are you the president of the fire department? Oh, this one's in the right list. Okay. Yeah, that's the same thing. All right. Well, so that was easy. <laughs> We've already uh, approved and signed the contract with the Washington Chair. We did that already. Yep. And then um, next item is to discuss the complaint made to uh, made to the Vermont Department mm -hmm. of Health and set up a site visit. Okay. Is this for Quarry Road? Yes, it okay. is. All right. And um, Mr. Robel called the Health Department. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not sure exactly what he told them, but they, basically they called me. And I have a here a printout that they sent me uh, how to determine what is a public health hazard. And I have before this I have been reading I have read the town health officer manual. And it's pretty clear that a public health hazard is something that's a hazard to the public health. Not somebody who doesn't have good sewage disposal on their property. So I think what I have to do here is go to the property and look, maybe just walk around the perimeter. I don't even know. I mean, it's just the town roads, right? Old town roads. And see if I see or smell anything. Okay. And if anybody wants to come with me, that'd be nice. I'm happy to. Watch out for the dogs up there. The I dogs, I think, are Allen's. I'm not worried about them, but of course the other oh, ones. Oh, there's the other ones farther down, but they're way farther. Yeah, I would down. go in from the top, yeah. probably. <laughs> I'll go with you, Dad. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So, I don't know if the person who lives there is there during the day. 
we're yeah. not we don't have to go on the property so okay. but it would be nice to let her know we're coming if but we don't have a phone no, or anything to get a hold so, of her besides yeah. that no box in Waitsfield or whatever yeah I mean, you're going to be walking on a public road, so... Right, I'm not going to go on the property. The whole facility is, is right next to our public highway. Yeah. What? And oh, the trailer that... The trailers are right, right oh, next to yeah, our... Oh, yeah, you can see them. ...on our right yeah. way, so they'll mm -hmm. be in our right way the whole time. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Speaking of which, but I can't remember how we... Uh, are resolving the car. Oh, we said July 1st. July 1st. Oh, I, I'm just going to double check the date, but okay. I'm pretty sure the letter said July 1st. Okay, great. So we'll yeah. bring we were a bunch up. of emails from... From Alan. He was, he was checking with other agencies and was told, I mean, one of the emails we got says you should call the state police. I think you could call the state police if somebody has left the car in the road. Which they did. But it is in the road. Well, but, you know, right. in the traveled way. Yeah, okay. I mean, I feel like so we that, have something in motion. I don't right. think we need to call. I don't think the state police are going to come out for somebody parking on the, basically yeah. on the side of the road. So. I don't think so either. So I don't know why all those other emails are... So we'll, we'll bring this up at a... Next, and well, it's like we're meeting after July, July 1st and then decide whether we'll hire a towing company. I think we kind of decided that, but we just yeah. decided to yeah. wait okay. till July 1st. Okay. And then you can tell us whether we need to hire somebody or... Yeah, you haven't heard anything. I, I don't expect that you would get a call. I'll actually, but... no, I haven't heard anything. Okay. I, I have. I've tried to stop mm -hmm. there periodically and knock on the door just to have a conversation I get nothing yeah mm -hmm. okay. either they know somebody's there and they're not answering the door or there's a vehicle in the yard other than the, the one that we're trying to get removed uh-huh um, so I'm sure somebody's there but they're just not mm -hmm. answering the door okay yep I've been there a couple of times just to try to have a conversation and see if, if we can help yeah. The car is causing problems for mm -hmm. everybody. It would be so much easier if they just say yes, take it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah really. Right. So you think this other um, car that's in this picture is one that's being used? Looks like a Forester yes. maybe? or a... That's Jezebel's car. Oh, really? It's a Volkswagen. Silver. What's she doing way up there? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe it was during mud season. Like oh, maybe she got stuck. Maybe it's... Hmm, yeah, okay, I don't know. That's not. <laughs> that's, that's what I go by. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's what, what she, she uses that name, That's what too. she uses, right? Yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure that's Jezebel's car. Yeah. I can't tell if it's a Vermont plate. Anyway, okay. So that's not an indication that the resident is there or not. Okay. So, all right. So I guess just let me know when you'd like to go do that visit. Okay. Um, either early in the morning or kind of end of the day is better mm -hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. She's usually dropping her kid off down here at seven twenty in the morning, school days. Oh, I thought there weren't wasn't a kid living there anymore. No. Is? Every time I bring the girls up for Debbie, uh -huh. Uh -huh. he's getting out of the car. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I, I've seen the boy, mm. evidence of the boy living there. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> oh. Can I add one other thing out of the blue? Uh, you, yeah. <laughs> you can't stop me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Somebody built a fence across a town road. Oh, yeah, you missed that. <laughs> right. Yeah. What do we do? Send them a letter? Or do we just knock <laughs> a letter? Them off the, knock them upside the head with a letter. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to drive up there today. I wanted to go look at it before yeah. the meeting, but I yeah. didn't have time to. Yeah. Remind me where this is? Uh, Flat Street. Oh, which is right up the road. Yeah, the first, yeah, right you know, the right. left of four yeah. little houses. Yeah. And then off Cabot Road. Yeah. Okay. You take the right, uh, when you get to the top of the hill, um, go past four little houses, go around, past the back of two of the houses, and all of a sudden there's a fence 
right across the road. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the town used to plow that road in the, the winter. The town plows it. It's a No, they haven't plowed it for a couple of years, couple not years. the back street. So the last couple of years, when I first started, the mm -hmm. first year I plowed, mm -hmm. um, I did plow around there. Yeah. And then halfway through that year, they started blocking it. No. Oh. So they had a ladder hard. across and a bunch of tree debris, and they obviously didn't want me plowing it for whatever reason. So what did the burns do? I mean, the first they house they, they could drove get right out. past uh, Blake's house and took their place. Oh, so yeah. okay. Yeah. But so it is a, could get the whole thing's one. a town road, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Is it though? So, I don't yeah, know. We is it? That. Yeah, because Russell put in a uh, driveway, and I had to change his address because he put in a new driveway. You put in a whole new. Driveway so, off Cabot Road. Right, yeah. so he has a driveway off Cabot Road now, mm -hmm. which changed his address from Flat Street to Cabot Road. Okay. So you may have to look at his property and parcel to see how far his parcel goes and whether or not Flat Street has a Class 3 or 4 road. It's, 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 it's been a class, uh, three road. Class, it's three. class 3 on the map and on the on list that I have. Right, we got to find how far it goes. Right. Does it loop all the way around, or does it just mm. do a J kind of? Right. And would the, would the town roadmap show that, or do we need to go to the parcel and see if there's like an easement for road right of you way? You wouldn't find that. Right. Those houses have been there forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah. it is there is a town road number, and um, all the maps show it go all the way around, but I don't have any of that. Does your letter that uh, you drafted for the Quarry Road issue um, work for this? Yep, I believe. I, I'll double check the wording, but we sent it to somebody else too that wasn't on Quarry Road, so yeah. it's pretty much just about mm -hmm. it, if you have objects or structures or whatever within mm -hmm. the right of way. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll work. I can double check. Um, mm -hmm. And then I guess I can try to verify. Mm -hmm. I can try to look at the roadmaps or whatever. I don't know if somebody else might have more experience yeah. with that. Just to verify. I don't want to send a letter if it's the not. The 911 map is pretty clear. Mm -hmm. 911 map. Okay. And I, I can look at that also. Okay. So I guess the last thing we want to do is, is yeah, yeah. get us in there and kind of warns that yeah. we don't really have right to. But right. they're not claiming that. If the road that. does stop there where he's got his fence, yeah. then we're barking up the wrong tree. And it, I don't know who built it. the fence, but is it someone who already is upset with us over other things? Or I know there's some I think the person that who built the fence is upset with the neighbor. Okay, gotcha. Neighbor. And for when with us for not doing anything with the neighbor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we definitely don't want to add insult to injury, Oh right? my goodness, like, no. I thought we'd just, just dog it up, dog your keys and cross your eyes. Okay. Or vice versa. So that's probably for the next meeting. <laughs> but if the town has been Flat plowing road. that for mm. hundreds of years, mm. does it become a town road that way? I mean, does it become property of the town? No. It could, but that's complicated. Yeah, there I'm pretty sure that's on the map. Precedent for that. I can't remember the eminent domain term person? that's used. Is it eminent domain? Yeah, no, it's, like um, there's two words to it. James but has his it. hand. You? Maybe James knows right. his hand. Okay. Well, so according to the 911 map, flash goes all the way around. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. But there, are, I think there are two road, two different road numbers. One is called Flat Alley. The back one is called Flat. But is it? This just says Flat Street. Town Road all yeah, the way. That's right. Yeah, it does say Flat Street all the way around it. Yeah. It does okay. not end at Russell's old driveway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's our answer. Okay. Well, good. Thanks for doing my homework for me. <laughs> 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 you want to come to the next meeting too? I would be in council probably. Um. <laughs> well, it's good for you guys to know that there's a fence there if you go. Yes. Yeah. Yep. If you get a I call or something. Text all yeah. And let him know that. I don't mm. think we can make that turn uh, by Blake's old residence. So. No. Oh. Right. Yeah. So the end of the road comes between Blake's and Burns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for allowing me to make that intrusion. Can I add something? Sure. This is from Brandy. 
she was in today to do the payroll because Pam's on vacation. And she also did up the sheet with the numbers for the last two weeks. And for income, we had $5,273.70. And 3500 of that was delinquent taxes. And the rest of it was fleet license, access permit, sale of lots, oh, cemetery lots, and dog licenses, Green Mountain passports, land recordings, map recording, town hall rental, vault fees, zoning permit. You want to leave that with Michael? Or? Mm -hmm. And then for expenses for the last two weeks, payroll was $7,394.62 and AP $17,696.80. And today she transferred $50,000 from the money market to the checking account. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I believe that uh, we're on to signing extension for listers yeah. um, and then signing the firework paper alarm and then signing our lawn mowing contract we've already mm -hmm. approved that previously mm -hmm. um, good night good night guys, good night, good night. guys. thank you nice. you're welcome yeah um and then we can, maybe we'll go on to the town hall roof after want to sign those things first mm -hmm. and then get them out of the way well so this one here I didn't actually look at it very closely, so I'm not sure where it's signed. I'll drop Thank this you. off to you Wednesday or Thursday. Yep, nope, fun. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Have a good night. Good night. Have a good night. Are you guys okay with just signing it and I can fill in all the rest? Like, I don't know how you guys feel about that. I, there's, I haven't been able to look at it and it looks like it's Did they, did they take a minute? Finish what they were doing that i'm not sure yet okay are they waiting for anything from us uh they're waiting for this they were waiting on answers to questions so i said but are they waiting for this before they finish the job as far as i knew when i last communicated with them they had planned on coming on a friday yeah, that has a weeks since ago, coming yeah. on mm -hmm. um i never talked with them afterwards no. to verify if they came or not mm -hmm. so i'm not sure um, I do know they had a list of a few questions and then this form that needed mm -hmm. to be signed. I can't remember. It is. So if you guys need me to find that out first, I, I guess that I understand. Well, there was something yeah. about who should who should be yeah. called, and, and we, we haven't de we didn't determined know. that. Or we didn't really talk about it. I mean, I feel like somebody in the fire department would yeah. be great, although we obviously have to... We need to ask. ask them. And um, oh, just Donnie. Yeah. Ask them and here. Donnie. With, um, do you want me to reach out to those people? Do you want to make a list of people and I'll call them and see if they'll do it? I guess. You don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind. Um, so it's Donnie Turgeon. Turgeon. Okay. Who, who is Donnie? He's a maintenance guy for the school. Okay. And he lives fairly close. I think they'd ask for three people. Mm -hmm. Maybe he said two or three. Uh, so that would be somebody on the fire department, Donnie, if they're willing, and then mm -hmm. who could be our third person? Uh, it'd be just a... Two people in the fire department? Roy Demers, maybe? Who? Roy Demers, he's close. Roy? Roy Demers is on the fire department, and he just lives down the street mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay. I'll put James. Question mark. Hmm? And James? Did you mention he lives James in Cowles? James doesn't, yeah. He doesn't oh, he lives in Cowles now. He doesn't, okay. No, it's oh. Thomas that's over here. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I can get a little bit of the fire department and ask. I mean, sorry guys, I have my phone on because my kids are home. on. That's not my kids. Stop. <laughs> anyway, um. Yeah. Do we have our three possible? May, like I would say from the fire department, maybe if I just reach out to the fire department in general. And ask if there could be two. From the fire people. department, okay. yeah. I mean, one one would be like to their main number, whatever they're... Uh, they're looking for three individuals. Oh, so okay. it okay. would be like, yeah, whoever they're willing mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. have do it, I guess. What were the other questions that they had? Um, 
I looked at it. Email back up. I feel like we already answered the other ones. Okay. Of course, now I shut my phone off. I think the other questions were if it was the library specifically who was going to be paying or if it was the town, and we already talked about that, and okay. it's the town. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I, I think that was it. Yep, I think that's it. Okay. At least that's all. That this is the email from Rusty. Okay, yeah. so I will verify those three people. I will get a hold of him and see if the work's all done. And I can also, um, if you guys want, I know I emailed some copies of this. I had to print it because I can't look at this on my phone, but I can go through it and fill it out, and then maybe we can all sign it at the next meeting if that sure. works for you guys. Or, I mean, this, this is just like the final... Agreement? I have no idea. Okay. Because I couldn't wrap my yeah. head around it. Okay. It yeah, so let's we'll look at it in the next meeting. <laughs> okay, that works. For the fire, fire alarm contract. All right. I feel bad because they might be waiting on payment, but. And, um, well, I'm, I'm okay. If, if, I, I feel like the board can also authorize one board member to, to sign for the board. Is that true? To sign what? This? This. The, the contract. Oh. What does it have? What does it have for signature lines? Is it asking for one? Uh, let's see. It's unrelated. I don't even know what half this stuff means, to be perfectly honest. Customer initials. I don't. Oh, that's where it is. It's really only asking for one signature. They've already filled it in as Woodbury Community Library, which I think we would want to change, right, to Woodbury Town. I um, I might actually have to go over this with him on the phone because. Okay. Well, why don't we put it on the next agenda and then we'll. Okay. We'll, yeah, I mean, we'll they weren't in it. We were ready to get it done, yeah. so. Okay. And then how about the mowing contract? Do we well, have? Yeah, we did. We skipped the Lister's extension. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean that was on. And uh, this is something they do every year because there's just no way they can get their work done between April one and July one or whatever it is that the state wants it. So the state mm -hmm. always approves. But we just have to say that we approve. All right. So I'll make a motion that we approve the Lister's extension. All right. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. And, and I'll take that back to Ron. All right. And he'll send it to the state. Thank you, Dave. Okay. And uh, so now the mowing contract. We did approve this. Yeah. But we just didn't. Um, I think I sent you this, copies of this on email so you can review it, mm -hmm. but uh, basically this is the same thing that Brandy has used in the past. I just um, sort of beefed up the list of the town properties to make sure that he knew that there are two parks over there. And, so we sign it, and then we send it to him, and he, he has to sign it. Yeah, okay. we'll sign it, and then we'll give it to Robin, and Sounds she good. can tell him that it's here for him to sign it, right? Is that okay? Yes. So I'll make a motion that we sign that contract that we've already approved. <laughs> um, discussion? Nope. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 So we have a motion to sign the contract is approved. Mm -hmm. That looks as we need a witness. Who do we need to ask one of you guys to be our witness? That does seem to, yeah, it does say we need a witness. Uh, town clerk's name. Town clerk. Do you want to be our witness, Robin? Sure. I'm going to sign it, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, I forgot to ask Alfie, but I guess that the sand screen must have arrived. Yes, it did. Okay. Yeah. Well, That's Thursday. Yeah. 
And I hope he was happy with it. I forgot to ask. So when I back, went back and reread the draft of the scope of work for the town hall roof, mm -hmm. I realized there's a bunch of, there are some, um, we need to clean it up grammatically. But, um, I mean, it's all just bullet points anyways. Did you, uh, oh shoot, what did I do with all my stuff? You got the uh, email from... Mary Jo Llewellyn. Oh, I'm I haven't read, read it yet. No. Okay, yeah. yeah. She put, is the, the red is her comments, I must say? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's our, um, our free consultant. Okay. And she said she'd be happy to meet with us at some point and go over anything. That, that's her specialty. And she lives in Woodbury. Okay. If we have to mill it, is there any tr like molding? I I don't remember up in the soffit or like in that area. Any what? Is there any like molding or uh, decorative molding of any kind? I'm just reading her comments and thinking about yeah. matching. Oh, no. No. I don't really. I mean, these. She, with all due respect, she's a consultant, right? Yeah. Okay. She did work for the state for years. Yeah. And, I'm not and too worried about the roof sheathing yeah, underneath. Yeah, me neither. Mm -hmm. I like that whoever can figure that I'm out. I'm not worried about the roof sheathing. Like, I mean, it, yes, whoever pulls it off and finds rotten roof decking, they can. You figure it out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we don't need to go to Joel to get special milled boards. Uh huh. Well, what if it? What if it's, um, the it's the original decking and it's not the same as you can, uh, boards that you buy? You got to remember this building is, is on the historical registry. Yeah. But they, well, I can't imagine that they care about. Um, Replacing the roof decking. So this is like underneath that. the right. underneath the metal. She is just worried because she's afraid that the thickness that of what they use won't be the same as what's on the market today. But whoever the contractor is will be able to use two feet. Like they'll figure it out. They'll be able to make it match. Any replacement material must match the dimensions. It's perfect. Historic material installed. That it disappears above oh, too. That's there's true. My, <laughs> there's my. Here's that. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. does not. Okay. So I have made copies of that. I'm having a hard time printing today from emails, but. And I was not able to find uh, draft RFPs. In the, you know, the short amount of research I did today. I have, and I said I would send you them, realizing I never did. I do have some RFPs for different town projects mm -hmm. okay. um, that I could mm -hmm. send. Thank you. you know that. There's a difference between the yellow room and the galvanized. I don't know. Um, I can find out. There is a difference. Okay. And my understanding is the galvanized room is a little, it's a little better, but it, I'm not sure if that's like. I couldn't tell if that's what she was suggesting. We should not. They don't look, I think that, she just they don't wants, look that different. I think she just cares about it being paint, like colored. Like she doesn't want like charcoal. Gray. No, 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 yeah. That's what There's I'm getting from this. The galvanum looks just like galvanized. Yeah. Which is what's mm -hmm. up there. Yeah. Uh, my only comment was taping the drip edge. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it matters if it's because it's not plywood. I'm assuming anyway that it's right, right. just like boards, deck boards. Sure, you can take that out. Unless you feel that it should be there. I don't, I don't really care that much. Yeah. <laughs> I would do it if I was doing it, but okay. Yeah. We can leave it too. I'm good with that too. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna cost them that much to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it looks like we just need to get, so we can refine that scope of work and then Michael, you can send us RFP template. Or you, we can I'll, use. I'll just send you some old. I mean, they were made from templates so originally. Yeah. So. Yeah, we can use this template. So, okay. It's so hard to find anything on the VLCT website. It's really too bad. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing would be Michael, the LHMP mm. consultant contract. Yeah. So we're getting ready to begin the work on a local hazard mitigation plan. Um, and we were sent a contract by Paul de Siena, the uh, consultant that um, the town has chosen to help with the plan. He sent us a contract. Um, I sent it to Brandy, who sent it to um, Vicki Hebert um, of VLCT Passive. Um, and we added, uh, or actually Paul added some language about insurance, et cetera. Um, and he sent this back to us um, based on the recommendations from um, Vicki Hebert from the LCT. So should be good. Um, um, and it would be great to get it signed because we have a meeting with him next week. I think I, I did send you guys copies of the, it's pretty short, simple. Yeah, I was able to read it on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. All right. so, okay, you want this one? Sure. Well, I guess I don't, I didn't put one out, so I don't okay. know if I saw Okay, you're fine. I was welcome to have that one. Nature of children's relationship with parties, compensation with birthness. So, what I'll do is, once it's signed, I'll, I'll um, scan it and send it back to him. Okay. And then we should do it. So we got one line, so it's okay if I sign this? Mm -hmm. oh, okay by me. I just realized you're talking about taping the drip edge to the uh, underlayment. Oh no, to the deck. Yeah, okay. and then just run the underlayment over the top of it. Okay, gotcha. It doesn't matter to me. No, no, I just thought I had misunderstood. Last item is to approve bills and payroll orders, um, which we'll do right now. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, Michael. Sure. Okay. Are you done with bees? Or do you still have bees? No. I don't have bees, but I'm thinking I might get some next year. Nice to have around. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an expensive time. Oh, no. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive honey for it. Yeah. Not. Mm -hmm. Or expensive seen, insect watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've seen a lot of bumblebees and wild mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't see so much last year, so. No. Yeah. I've been seeing bats coming back. Like, oh. a lot of them. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to wait for those? You don't have to if you. I can bring them by. Okay, here's a. Thank you. So, can I have the little report that Brandy you read out about Brandy? I just handed it to you. Oh, you did? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got the one. I think I the right one. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we don't have to worry about this being a classroom anymore. Uh, for a little bit. School ends on Monday the 17th. Okay, mm. all the nasty signs are gone. <laughs> we need because it's like almost out of the air. Mm. So we're, uh, were these chairs over there or were they... After your own, you put them. Uh, they, were, they were placed at all these... So there were three tables in the middle. Okay, well, look, maybe I'll just leave when you guys can. Okay. Yeah, well, guys, have a good night. Have a good night, Robin. Good night, Robin. Good night. Good night. The tables are out in the middle. 
these smaller tables were set up at this height. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then, yeah, so uh, that, that one you can put down and put back over there. Okay. And this one will move around to where that one was a minute ago. Is this pretty good? Yes. All right. That's a very good approximate. It was, I think it's <laughs> an exact reproduction. Well, we we're going to have to move this right. around. Okay. Yeah, we'll take that down a little bit. Okay. Well, I don't know about that guy with the dog complaint. It was Bryn Paul's dogs that he was complaining about. Who is, who's dogs? Uh, Bryn Paul, who is the, the problem person up on, well, he's one of Eric Wallace's. Uh, is he the one that's building the kind of like crazy house up there with all the stuff? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and they claim that he bought Eric's. Eric Johnson's um, property for thirty dollars for three hundred dollars and a is it on Eric's property? Or was there an official transfer of property from Yeah yeah, good question. It's all bound up with the uh, tax sale bullshit. It's a it's a shame, it's a mess. So this. Oh, you left the camera on. <laughs> I forgot that last time. <laughs> the camera is still on. <laughs> it doesn't count if you're not running it. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, it's uh, the person who owns the dogs is, the person who complained is way at the end just before you go into the woods. Okay. And the person who owns the dogs is be before that. The closest no, when they neighbor. drive down the road, dogs. Yeah, dogs. Yeah, big okay. dogs. Spark at his truck and run alongside until he gets home and then jumps on his truck, I guess. And this is a new owner, a new... He's a fairly new... The, the guy um, at the end of the road, Matthew Hall, is fairly new, but he claims that he's made complaints about this before and 
I've yeah. never heard any, so I don't know. I guess I've got to call him. I don't know what to do. We, we don't have anybody to... Anybody to, who wants to be the dog officer. Is there another pile there that I haven't looked at? Well, there's this one I just signed that I looked at. the actual bills, right? She didn't have real dinner, you just had snacks, right? I just had snacks. Yeah. Oh, that's like a tease. I know. I'm so hungry though. Are you still doing the no lunch thing? I was just going to tell you, I've changed my ways. I'm eating breakfast. Eating breakfast? Yeah. No. And lunch. No lunch. No breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not like the no breakfast. I didn't think I was going to like it, but I kind of do. Wait, so you, you, you used to do that. <laughs> you never used okay. to. I don't think I ate breakfast. It was that you never ate lunch. Well, I never ate lunch, but I also never ate breakfast. Jeez, you Usually. only ate one meal a day? No, I ate like five, five <laughs> dinners. <laughs> like I'll go home and have like dinner number one, dinner number two, Stop. dinner number three. Mm -hmm. What about the guy you're working with? Is he eating lunch? Uh, he's not with me right now. He's got, he had a whole list of stuff he had to get done um, before this county road project yeah. um, that I talked to you about. So he's, off to his own thing. But he does eat when he feels like it. I make a motion that we adjourn. Um, Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.